For the patient that's in septic shock, we always say that their vessels get leaky. What does that mean? Let me show you. Okay, so we're going to pretend this is a blood vessel. We know that blood vessels are stretchy. They expand and they contract and they make them permeable, which means that fluid can leak through them. But here's the thing is that I'm going to poke holes in this balloon here. And so that way we can kind of simulate permeability with fluid shift from outside the vessels to inside the vessels and so on and so forth. So you can see that we are starting to see some fluid move in. I'm just going to add a little bit more. Okay. So we see some fluid that's moving through those little holes that we stretched. Okay. Now watch what happens when I stretch out this balloon. Watch what happens to the, the fluid. Look at how much more fluid is leaking out. Now I'm going to go there and stop. And then when I expand it, we start to see more leak. This is how blood vessels work, is that when we have vessels that are constricted, we have less leak. We have less fluid that's going to move out of the blood vessels. But when, when we expand and dilate those blood vessels, become more permeable, meaning more fluid is going to leak away or out of the vessels. That is what happens in septic shock, is that we have an immune process that causes vessel dilation, and that vessel dilation is going to promote more shift of fluid from the vessels to other areas of the body, thus creating our distributive shock.